Okay, everyone, welcome to week six of class. Uh, we're getting down to the wire, just a few weeks left here. Before we jump into this week, your grades are already in the gradebook for week five. <clears throat> so go ahead and take a look at those. Overall, the collages uh, were really strong. I was quite impressed. Uh, I could tell a lot of good work went into those and really compelling arguments going on. Uh, so thank you so much for really going for it with those and engaging with that material. And uh, some interesting discussion boards, uh, what you guys thought about um, Wei Wei and his incarceration. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, you guys have been a good group, a, a lot of good critical thinking going on. So give yourselves a pat on the back. Also, uh, at this point, I always like to remind students, you know, be sure you are keeping up with the grade book, that you are asking any questions if you have them about grades. Don't wait till the end of week eight to ask me something about a grade from week two or whatever it might be. Uh, I've tried uh, to go ahead and fill in any gaps in the grade book uh, up until this point. That means that if you have been missing an assignment and have not submitted it, I have uh, put a zero in there because I want you to see what your true grade is. So usually up until this point, I just leave those blank, uh, especially if we've worked out any extensions. Uh, but it won't show you what your true grade is because it will only calculate off of what you have submitted thus far. So with putting those in, if you notice that all of a sudden, you know, your grade dropped, uh, it's because I put in those places where you may not have submitted something. So uh, just make sure you're checking in on that and asking if you have any questions there. Okay, moving on to week six, places and spaces. This is one of my favorite weeks. Uh, I love the film reviews. I love the earth sculptures, and it's a really interesting reading that you've got going on. So we also have an extra credit assignment this week. So your reading, uh, go ahead and download this PDF on heterotopias. You can also find it on this web link here. So we're not reading out of our textbooks. We are reading this, uh, uh, it was actually from an interview, so it's kind of a transcribed interview slash essay. Uh, Michel Foucault uh, was a really prolific postmodern theorist uh, working in the 1960s, and he had some really interesting ideas. Now, we don't necessarily have to agree with them all, uh, but I'd like you to engage with it. And you may read this and think, oh my gosh, this is, this is not easy to get through. That is okay. I want you to engage with it anyway. Just because something is difficult uh, doesn't mean that it's not worth worth it. Uh, actually, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. This is the link. You want to follow this link for the reading. This PDF uh, is a mini lecture that I've given you that will help you kind of walk through those the basic concepts of what heterotopias are. And so I've given you these slides to kind of help you break down this idea of spaces and he he talks about our you know our main issue in life isn't really about time we're always talking about time and how there's never enough time and time is fleeting well he comes from this really interesting uh, position that are we're actually dealing with this issue of space and he's going to talk about how we break down space and how we use space and in a class that's about visual culture this is really important because uh, we have you know this deep as he says, a uh, layered, rich sensory experience of space, and that spaces are designed, they are decorated, they are, um, you know, abolished or created based on cultural norms and how we use them. He talks, for example, about the cemetery and how cemeteries used to be right there in the middle of town at the church. If you ever go to really old churches, they usually have a cemetery right there. Our perspective on death has shifted uh, since we now, uh, you know, are so medically centered, uh, you know, the idea of death scares us. We, we're constantly trying to defy death, right? So we push these things away from our centers of commerce and our centers of life. And now where are cemeteries? They're on the outskirts of town. And so it's interesting to kind of look at the why, the how and why we design spaces the way we do. And that's what Foucault is going to do for us. So this may be the hardest thing you read through this class, and I don't want you to shy away from it, and I don't expect you to get it all, and that's okay. I want you to engage the best you can with it. Ask me if you have questions. It's, it's a really interesting reading, uh, so I just want to preface it that way. So with that reading, you have uh, an extra credit assignment. So I give you a few weeks to get this one done. 
It's extra credit. It must be completed no later than the end of week seven. So assignments, if you submit it past then, won't be graded. So I want you to uh, view the film clip here on photographer Stephen Shore, and then uh, read the piece on, uh, that Foucault gives us on heterotopias. And do you think heterotopias exist today? How does this knowledge help you understand the way we use visual space? And how might the work of photographer Stephen Shore be considered heterotopic? So this is one of those journals. So, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> uh, I'm looking for a, a page double space 12 point font. So you've got a couple weeks to get that done if you choose to do so. Okay, we've got our last create assignment for the class. This one is going to require you to get uh, out from behind your computer and get outside. So this is uh, an opportunity to create your own original earth sculpture in the style of artist Andy Goldsworthy. And I've given you a short clip about his work and how he creates his work. And uh, you can follow this link here or you can watch it here. And uh, I'd like you to do a little research on his style. So I've given you uh, this link to a lot of examples of his work. Uh, he uses only materials that are found outdoors. There's something very temporal about some of his work and then something that feels very uh, prolific and uh, uh, the last the stand, the uh, test of time, excuse me, uh, you know, these kind of monolithic sculptures that feel very ancient. Uh, and then he creates things such as this that, you know, could very easily be gone in an instant. So that sense of temporality of being there, of experiencing it, of using the materials, being very hands-on, uh, considering this kind of sense of, you know, uh, regeneration of the earth, all these cool ideas that he is working with. Uh, and really cool, very compelling work that he does. So using only natural materials, these can be leaves in the backyard, branches in the park, seashells on the beach, wherever you can get out and find some natural materials to work with, you're going to use creative problem solving to complete three earth sculptures to photograph and submit. So the key here is to transform these materials in some way. Create something entirely new. I will not be giving you credit for simply photographing something as it is uh, that's not what we're doing and believe me I have students do it every single time I teach this class they will go outside they will photograph a rose on their rose bush and think that that counts as a sculpture it's not you're going to be taking these materials just like we did with Hawk uh, some of you got marked down a little bit because I wanted to see you transforming the images that you were using more and creating a new composition that's what you're doing here you're taking these materials and you're creating a brand new composition. So after you finish the sculptures, photograph them and post your images in your entry, and then you're going to do a quick write-up here. So describe the experience you had doing this project. What was the most challenging part of creating these sculptures? There's a lot of reflection here. I want you to reread Foucault's third principle uh, in, in the Heterotopias reading that we're doing this week about the theater and the garden, and how are your sculptures similar are you creating a world within a world? Why or why not? Number three, how has doing this project changed the way you think about artists like Andy Goldsworthy? Or has it? Maybe it hasn't. Why or why not? Uh, students tend to, you know, either have one view or the other. They've already really uh, enjoyed and engaged with artists like this, or it's something entirely new. A lot, oftentimes students, and I'm not trying to feed you answers, but, you know, there's no right or wrong answers here anyway. Uh, but students will, you know, say things, when I looked at it, it seemed kind of blah or easy, and then when I started doing it myself, I realized how much critical thinking went into this, how much problem solving, so it really changed my perspective having this hands-on tangible experience. So the fourth question here, find at least one biblical reference that can pair well with the images of your sculptures. How do your images communicate the messages found in these scriptures? So this is really about... Uh, recognizing how images can represent concepts and ideas in kind of an abstract way. So I'm looking for two to six sentences in length for each of these. Uh, be sure to proofread your work before submitting. Give me some substance here. Don't just say, oh, it was easy or it was difficult. Uh, tell me why. Uh, really engage here. This is some self-reflection as well. And again, I've given you some examples here of his work. I want to really see you go for this and transform these materials as much as you can. 
uh, some creative problem solving going on. Get your kids involved. Kids tend to be really good at this and really creative. So if you need some inspiration, get them outside there with you. So that is a fun project that we do this week. Okay, so we've got kind of one extreme and the other. We're going to be outside playing in the dirt, and then we're going to be writing our film reviews. So I've told you last week that I want you to uh, pick your film, watch it, take notes, and this week is where that writing comes in. This is your next six to eight page paper. I'm looking for six to eight pages of text, right? Uh, this assignment is intended to be a critical review, therefore the emphasis of the paper should be on the questions proposed in each prompt. It is perfectly appropriate for the first one to two pages to be a summary, that's included in that six to eight pages, uh, of summary of the film. What I don't want is four pages of your, uh, your film review to be just a summary of the film and then you know two pages of analysis. Uh, I want really strong analysis here and really strong uh, interaction with the prompts. So all these are available on Netflix currently, so uh, you can choose from The Passion of the Christ. Things to think about here, and excuse me, this announcement is going to be a little bit longer this week because I want to dive into these a little bit. So how does the new media of film affect the delivery of a timeless story? So we have scripture that is a timeless story, and then we have a relatively new medium in the span of human history, which is film. I want you to consider camera angles, uh, things such as a montage scene, do a little research on that, flashbacks. These are all ways that film is very unique in the way it tells a story that we can't necessarily do in, in written work. So this is all about uh, you know, interpretation and how this media affects how we understand the story. Number two, what is the theme here? Consider the rise, the climax, and fall of action. How do these thematic elements influence the audience perspective? So in this, with Passion of the Christ, we're really looking at kind of uh, traditional film studies and how, how film is used as a medium overall. Number three, how does the idea of authorship, so authorship of scripture and interpretation by Mel Gibson, who was the creator of this film, how does that play into storytelling in his interpretation of scripture? So where is he taking artistic liberties? And I want you to give at least three examples of elements found in the film that are not found in scripture. And number four, who is the target audiences of this film and why? This may require a little reading into reviews, writing about, about this film. Okay, uh, the next film choice you have is a documentary called The True Cost. It's an excellent one. I recommend that everyone watch it regardless if you selected this film or not. This is all about the fashion industry. Things to think about here. What is the concept of fast fashion and how is it affecting our economy on a global scale? Give at least three examples of cause and effect in the film. Number two, in what ways are advertising and visual culture contributing to the way we consume clothing? Think of everything from a billboard to Instagram. Uh, and the film doesn't necessarily engage with all of those different mediums, but this is somewhere where you can bring in your own ideas uh, into this concept. Uh, you know, Instagram now uh, has ads, right? And a lot of them tend to be uh, clothing ads. So give three examples from the film or your own research here. How can consumers affect change on this model? So the model that's presented of how the fashion industry works now in 2016, 2017. Uh, as experts pose it in the film, consuming more can have a negative effect on your psyche. So can a change in your consumption habits improve your well-being? How can it improve the well-being of others? And four, as Christians, what is our moral obligation when it comes to consuming goods? What is our obligation to the environment? And these are uh, issues that are presented throughout the film, not necessarily as from a Christian perspective, but as a human perspective. Okay, and your third choice here is The Little Prince. Uh, this is an animated film based on an iconic uh, children's book written in France uh, during World War II. It was really written to deal uh, to help children deal with loss. And it's been uh, recreated, reinterpreted into this film. This is a great one if you have kids to watch uh, with them. So you can kind of have a family movie night and uh, get some work done at the same time. So here, 
Describe how this film illustrates the idea that film is first a visual medium before anything else. So consider the pros and cons of translating a beloved classic book to film. What can a film offer that a book cannot? What can a book offer that a film cannot? Number two, what is nostalgia? Now, I don't just want a dictionary definition here and you to move on. I want you to do some research on this concept of nostalgia and how is it present in this film? Why is nostalgia so powerful on our psyche? Again, this is going to require some research. Uh, think of, you know, all the Pixar movies really pull on this idea of nostalgia as well. Uh, they do a great job of creating films that are not really just for kids, are they? They uh, Adults love to watch those films as well. And it's because of this uh, concept of nostalgia and presenting, uh, you know, a very specific view of the world that is sometimes uh, better than it was. I'm giving you a little hint there. Uh, so that's an interesting concept that I really want you to dig in and engage with. Don't skim over this uh, second question here. Number three, how is symbolism present in the film? Be specific. Give at least three examples here. Why are these symbols important to the characters? What is their function in the story? And how can these symbols reflect a Christian narrative? Why or why not? Uh, and there's definitely some, some symbols that you could run with there in this, in this uh, question. Number four, how does this film deviate from reality? Uh, this isn't a Pixar film, but I'm just, again, using that as an example. Those always deviate from reality. So there's no wave of a wand, cast of a spell in any Pixar film or this film, which kind of follows a Pixar model, to be honest. Uh, there's no tangible magic present in the story, and yet there's really this sense of magic, even though uh, it's not, you know, there in a really demonstrative fashion. So this prompt's really dealing with kind of the psychology of storytelling and the psychology of film. Uh, here we're really dealing with ethics, and here uh, we're dealing with kind of more traditional uh, uh, film studies and analyzing, you know, how how a film is is its own medium compared uh, to uh, traditional storytelling. So. Pick one of those. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to proofread if you'd like me to. And you've got your quiz, of course, as well. This is going to deal with that heterotopious reading. So film review, quiz, earth sculptures. Those are your three assignments this week that are due. Uh, this extra credit, if you choose to do it, is due at the end of week seven. That's what's going on. I know uh, this was a little long, but I wanted to make sure I engaged with all those prompts. And have a great week, everyone.